Dear students, we have talked about various different organizational structures in the, mul uh, in the multinational context. Uh, and we have uh, uh, talked about the evolution of an organization uh, and how the structures of that organization, they evolve when they go through the international, uh, internationalization process. Uh, but that we have discussed as a hypothetical, a generic approach that usually uh, that is something which happens and that is uh, how it can be uh, turned into a model that first they, ha they have an export department, then they go to the sales subsidiary level, then they go to the international division level and they finally global product division area uh, structure and then finally network of subsidiaries. However, uh, when we look at real life examples and when we look at examples from various different countries, we see that uh, all organizations do not follow this generic path. Uh, there are different variations and those variations, they can be attributed to what is the uh, location of the parent, parent country. Why the location of parent country is important uh, in shaping the process of this growth and evolution, uh, that's because the national cultures, they have a huge impact on how people work. Uh, you have discussed and looked at the Hofstede's framework of national cultures. And national cultures, they vary on different dimensions. And those dimensions, they translate into the workplace and how you organize your systems, your organizational systems, your institutional systems. And therefore, it's not always possible that an organization would follow the same trajectory in one country as it follows in the other. So national cultures, they have a huge impact on how an organization and its structure, they evolve and grow. So from real life research, we have come to find out uh, that uh, European uh, multinationals, they are very much different from the American multinationals and uh, Japanese multinationals are totally different. And then there are Chinese and Korean multinationals which have different type of structures and evolutionary paths. Uh, so let's look at uh, each one of them. Uh, the European multinational structure, that uh, usually it is seen that it uh, grows from the uh, regular mother-daughter uh, structure, functional, that is the functional structure, the mother-daughter uh, functional structure, uh, to a product area divisions or matrix structure. So they don't go for an international division. They, uh, you know, automatically they shift towards a product division or a matrix structure. So um, uh, that is because the European culture that is more uh, focused on collaborative and teamwork approach. Uh, the Europeans, they have a kind of culture which is more collective which is more collaborative. They are not that individualistic as you can see our Americans or North Americans. So that, uh, that characteristic, the personality trait, that national characteristic that translates into their um, organizational structures. So they organize their organization in the form of uh, a matrix structure more easily than other, organi than other organizations working in other parts of the world. Similarly, we see that uh, Swedish multinationals, they uh, tend to adopt a mixture of mother-daughter and uh, product division structure. So um, because they are same European structures, but they go for a mixture because uh, in their culture, they have uh, a, a tendency towards, uh, you know, the, the hierarchy, a tendency towards uh, following the rules and procedures. And therefore, they want to have a mix of product daughter, a mother daughter and product division structure. Nordic M MNCs, uh, they may prefer a matrix structure. However, 
in uh, when we see in United States, that is a striking difference in United States that if they try to implement the matrix structure, usually that comes with a limited success. For example, Ford Motors, you know, Ford company, uh, a, a huge automobile company uh, uh, that originated from uh, the US uh, by Henry Ford. Uh, that company, they tried to go for this matrix types of, type of approach. And what did they do? They took their European division. They took that division to uh, so America. And they tried to integrate the, uh, the management. Not obviously, they took production facilities. They took the management to uh, America so that they could work more integrated ways. Uh, Lakin, uh, that type of structure did not uh, work and they went back to the regional type of structures that European market, ko European uh, jo subsidiaries and the American market, ko American subsidiary. Dekhe. So, metric structure was not very much limited in, um, uh, in, in Ford Motors. Uh, then, uh, Japanese multinationals uh, you would be knowing that Jap uh, Jap uh, Jap Japanese companies, they have a family-oriented uh, culture in which authority is centralized in the head of the family and the person who is heading the family business. You will also know that mostly the um, uh, Japanese multinationals, hai, they are still family businesses. So, there is centralized Although they have subsidiaries in all over the world, but the Japanese organizations, multinationals, they try to keep things under their control. So, wo apne systems ko centralized rakhte. And finally, we don't have abhi tak hume, uh, we don't have much information about uh, how Chinese or Indian or subcontinent multinationals how they evolve because they because there are very few examples of Chinese or Indian or some continent multinational. So we are we yet have to see uh, how the culture of these organize uh, these uh, countries that affects the organizational structure. So this is how various different countries they uh, and the national cultures they affect the organizational structures of uh, the uh, of the of the companies which are originating from those particular countries.